I'm begging you, stop buying this inferior AC to AC voltage controller and this inexpensive bridge rectifier as a way to power your treadmill motor. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. I'm beginning to sound like a broken record. I've made a lot of videos about powering treadmill motors and in many of those videos I talk about how this is not a good voltage controller. This is not a good bridge rectifier. This is an excellent voltage controller and this is an excellent bridge rectifier. Even with all those warnings, and even with all that information out there, I am still constantly getting people sending me emails, showing me pictures of their setup, and they're running this thing right here. And I just don't get it. Yes, this is more expensive. You get what you pay for. But right now, these are selling for right around 30 bucks, and these are selling for right around $15. So it's not like you're spending $50 more to get a lot more quality. You're only spending $15 more and you're getting a ton more quality. So first let's talk about what it is I don't like about this voltage controller. Actually, let me take one step back. Let me tell you why it is I have this voltage controller. When I started researching, how to power my DC treadmill motor for a variable speed. I was looking for something I could use with my bandsaw and be able to slow it down. It was a wood cutting bandsaw and I wanted to be able to cut metal. There was a fair amount of information out there saying, get yourself one of these, get yourself one of these, hook it all up and it'll be great. So that's what I did. I bought this. I bought one of these, I hooked it up, and it didn't work as well as I would have liked. This particular voltage controller at low RPM suffers from a pulsing. I don't know what causes it, I don't know why it does it, but it definitely suffers from it, and it's super annoying. See that pulsing? Really annoying. But, we turn it up, smooths out, goes away. The reason that you go with a DC treadmill motor and a variable power supply is you want to slow things down. And maybe you don't need the slowest speeds because this does smooth out as it speeds up. But if you at all need slower speeds, you don't want to go with this. I hooked this up on my bandsaw. I've used it on my bandsaw and it worked okay. After I installed it, I decided that I was gonna do a test. I was getting ready to write an article for my website on my bandsaw upgrade. This was before I had a YouTube channel. And I thought, you know what? We're gonna buy several different voltage controllers and we're gonna see which one works the best. And in doing so, I was able to get this unit right here. I purchased three or four different voltage controllers and this one was by far the superior unit. After I got the bandsaw set up, I upgraded my lathe, I upgraded my DIY mill, and both of those used a unit like this and the results were far superior. This stayed in my bandsaw for several years and the reason it stayed in that power supply box is I just didn't have time to change it out. But recently, I did a video talking about SCRs versus Triacs, and I wanted to know what the main switching component was in both of these power supplies. And so I ended up removing this from my original bandsaw power supply, and I replaced it with one of these that I happen to have on hand. And the results were immediate, and the results were night and day. First of all, I was able to take that bandsaw motor even slower. Before, it was going at a decent clip and was probably just on that ragged edge of being slow enough to cut steel. I did cut a lot of steel with it, but I'm sure it was hard on my blades. 
Now with a unit like this one, I can go about half that speed if I so choose. And so it's nice to have that option. So here's a quick shot showing the bandsaw with the better SCR voltage controller and how smooth and how slow it is. I don't have any before footage. Well, I probably do. There's, there's a whole series of videos on this bandsaw. So there is some before footage, but nothing that's gonna be a direct comparison. And I am able to take that down to a crawl. That blade is barely moving. There was definitely a pulsing at the lower RPM. So this was not as smooth, not as consistent, whereas this no longer suffers from that. More importantly is quality of components. Quality of what's here. Let me show you what I discovered when I opened this up the other day. There you have all the basic components, everything that's in there. Now there is a lot less components in this unit because it is cheaper than what we have in here. And more components doesn't automatically make it better, but on a simple circuit like this, this one has a few more resistors, this one has a few more capacitors. It totally explains why this one is so much smoother. Now back to this. This unit probably doesn't have more than a total of 20 hours runtime. And I don't know that I ever ran it for more than an hour in a single sitting. The thing that is concerning to me is that resistor right there. If you look at that resistor, you can see that it's been getting hot. You can see that it is getting hot enough to burn the outside of the component. Heat is the number one enemy of electronics. And anytime you have a component like that that is overheating, that is starting to burn the outside, you run the risk of system failure. And just because one component fails doesn't mean that you can just easily replace that component. Because as it goes out, something else may fail at the same time. Here we have a picture of a unit like this in my lathe, and it easily has hundreds of hours of runtime on it. In fact, I've been known to stand there at the lathe for more than an hour on many occasions with it pretty much running the entire time. And if you look, there is no burning, no scorching. It does not look like any of the components have gotten hot. Now, part of that probably has to do with the fact that this unit comes with a cooling fan, but that cooling fan's not blowing directly on the electronics. The bigger part is that this is a more efficient, better setup unit, and this is not as good. So I'm begging you, if you're going to buy an AC voltage controller, don't get the really cheap one. Get something that is higher quality. You will be much, much happier with it. So now let's talk about bridge rectifiers. I see pictures. I see setups that those of you, the viewer, have done following my instructions. And you'll splurge on the better voltage controller, but you're still running this bridge rectifier. And a question I get fairly often is why would you need something like this in place of something like this, because this is rated at 50 amps and 1000 volts. The power coming out of either of these is never going to exceed that. This is rated at 100 amps and 1200 volts. And the question is, if this is good enough, why do we need to spend the extra money for this? Because this can be had, you can get a pack of eight of these for like eight bucks. This is gonna cost you another $15, give or take. The problem is you can't go with max amps and max volts. Most electronics are rated in their max amperage and max volts, but that doesn't mean that they are going to live a long time and be very functional at higher amps and volts. And the other thing to consider is heat. Heat is the enemy of electronics. That's the problem with the resistor on this guy. And 
if you can keep stuff cool, it's going to last a lot longer. Well, if this is running at a higher percentage of its capacity, it's going to be running hotter, it's going to be pushing harder, and it's not going to work as well. Whereas if you have one that you're running well under its max capacity, it's going to work a lot better. It's not working hard. This one has a built-in heat sink. It's going to keep it nice and cool. There is no contest between this one and this one. Now, I made the same mistake with this that I did with this, and I ran some of these in some of my early setups. And on several occasions, anything that caused a spike in load, like sticking a blade or those kind of things, caused this guy to burn out. Now, with this unit right here, I have done single point threading, I have done, I've stuck a blade, I've done various things, and there hasn't been any issue with this. It's not burning out. It's because it's so much stronger that it's not in risk of burning out. I understand that if you are setting up a treadmill motor in a shop tool or for your DIY project, you are probably doing it on the cheap. I mean, that's one of the biggest advantages of going with a treadmill motor is because you can get it for little to no money. Oftentimes they're free. And I understand that because you're on a budget, you don't want to spend the money for this when this is a third the cost when added together. But it is not worth it to go with these two components. They don't have the longevity. They don't function as well. And if you purchase these, ultimately you're going to end up replacing them with these components right here. So this is a situation where you might as well spend a little more money on the front end and you will be a lot happier with the results. If you have any questions on setting up a voltage controller like this, setting up the potentiometer, hooking up a treadmill motor to shop tools, those kind of things, I've got tons of videos on doing just that. Look through that library and likely that will answer any questions you have. But if you need an answer sooner than that, put a question down in the comments. I try to look at all those comments. I try to answer all those questions. And it's because of those comments, people dealing with issues and problems, that I've received emails with pictures showing people using these things. Much of what appears on my channel is because of those comments, so feel free to comment. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.